Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Sorry I didn't release one last week, I've been trying to work out a proper schedule for YouTube videos. Anyway, today we're going to be taking a look at a $25 Apple PowerBook G3 that I got off of eBay. The only problem is, it doesn't actually work. But I think it's time we open up the package and see if we can fix it. This is definitely not the most well packaged laptop I've ever bought. The laptop is literally just bubble wrapped with masking tape on the outside. First of all, let's break out the charger. This is the original yo-yo style charger that would have come with this laptop. It definitely needs a good cleaning. The PowerBook itself is actually fairly secure in many layers of bubble wrap. I'm just really surprised the seller used masking tape of all things. Yeah, this PowerBook is going to need a good clean. First of all, let's try and see what happens when we turn it on. Unsurprisingly, nothing happens. First of all, let's try a little trick that worked on other PowerBooks I've owned before. To open the laptop up, I disengage the two latches on the top of the keyboard. We can see that the laptop does indeed have RAM and a hard drive. I unplugged the PRAM battery and put the keyboard back on. I tried starting up the laptop again. This time I heard that lovely boot chime. I was honestly so excited to see it power up. I couldn't seem to get rid of the screen flickering by changing the shutter speed, which was pretty annoying. The previous owner was definitely very, very religious. And it also looks like the airport card is picking up local Wi-Fi networks. That's definitely quite a collection of church songs there in iTunes. Taking a look further, this PowerBook has 640 megabytes of RAM and a 400 megahertz G3 processor. It also has a 60 gigabyte hard disk, which is far more than the 6 gigabyte one it would have originally came with. The battery also seems to be holding a charge. But at under a thousand milliamp hours, I definitely would not recommend using it. Well, I think it's time we clean it up and getting it looking as good as we can. Starting things off, I use some eucalyptus oil on the lid of the laptop. Combined with the use of some antibacterial wipes, this helped clean a lot of the grime. Aside from some minor scratches, the outer casing cleaned up pretty well. The trackpad and keyboard needed quite a bit of work. I started off by wiping it and getting into as many crevices as I could. I used Q-tips coated in eucalyptus oil to get the sides of the keycaps. This was very effective and got the keyboard looking very clean. Last of all, I used my air blower to get rid of any of the remaining debris from under the keycaps. It looked pretty good, so I didn't feel the need to use my high pressure air blower. Moving on to the screen, I put another antibacterial wipe to work, rubbing gently as to not damage the display panel. I then wiped away the residue with a microfiber cloth. This looked a bit better, but I decided to use some lens cleaner as well to finish off the screen. The base of the laptop really did need the most work. Leftover sticker residue was going to be a bit of a pain to remove. With a fair amount of force and eucalyptus oil, the gunk eventually came off. Next, I removed the remnants of glue from the missing rubber feet holes. I have a bunch of these small silicon feet that I thought I'd use. Turns out they are slightly too big and thus didn't fit. I didn't see an easy way to make them fit, so I decided to just place each one next to one of the holes. While not exactly what I wanted to do, it'll stop the laptop sliding around and stop it from getting scratched easily. I decided I should apply some new thermal paste and open it up and check how everything is inside. To remove the keyboard, all I had to do was lift up on this cable. On first inspection, the hard disk isn't even screwed in. Let's take off the heatsink and see how the 20 year old thermal paste has held up. The cooler is held in place by a total of 3 screws. Once they're removed, it comes off very easily, exposing the PowerPC 750 400MHz CPU. The paste had definitely hardened, but with a q-tip and some eucalyptus oil, eventually I got it off. A lot of force was required to remove the hard paste from the cooling plate, but it did eventually come off. Next I noticed that the airport card had its antenna wire jammed underneath the card. After some trial and error, it did all fit back the way it should. I wanted to screw the hard disk in properly, but I didn't have any screws that would sit inside the rubber grommets of the mounting bracket. I improvised and used a strip of bubble wrap to help hold the drive in place and stop it moving around. This should also help protect it against damage due to drops. 
for thermal paste, we are using Arctic Silver 5, which has great thermal conductivity and will help dissipate the heat away from the CPU. I tried squeezing out the smallest amount I could. A bit more came out than I expected, but once I put the cooler back on, it will spread evenly and thin over the CPU lid. I screwed the cooler back in place securely and plugged the keyboard back in. It is really surprising that the components are so easily accessible in an Apple laptop of all things. I put the battery back in and now it's time to try using this freshly cleaned Apple machine. Hearing that boot chime on these old Apple computers brings back so many good memories. That also means I didn't kill the laptop while fiddling around with it. After about 40 seconds, it had finished booting up. There's actually a lot of songs on here that I like, and from what I can tell, this laptop was actually used up until around 2011. The HTC Gracia picture on the desktop definitely supports my theory. There is also a lot of old memes on here, and it's fair to say that their hilarity has been lost to the ages. I'll respect the previous owner's privacy and not look through their personal documents. Let's try playing some games that are installed on here. Marble Blast Gold is a 3D platformer in a similar style to Super Monkey Ball. The aim is to get the ball to the end of the level. I actually found this quite fun and it runs fairly well on this old laptop. Chess also works fine, although this is hardly surprising. This laptop is running the latest supported version of macOS, which was released in November of 2007. Meaning this laptop got updates for nearly 8 years. I want to create a new user account and delete the current one that's on here, but it's actually password locked. Thankfully, it is possible to get around this. Turning on the laptop while holding down the keys Command and S will get you into single user mode. Then all I had to do was type password, missing the O and the R, followed by the short name of the user account. I could then enter a new password. It's worth noting that the characters don't actually show up on screen as you type. This confused me the first few times I tried this. I then went ahead and deleted the old user account and files. Even though this laptop is around 20 years old, I think the design has actually held up really well. There is a very solid selection of ports, and both the optical drive and battery can be easily ejected. While I'm at it, I'll also clean up the charging brick as well. These old yo-yo chargers are starting to be worth a bit of money, probably because the design is so cool. Last of all, let's try editing a video on this very old laptop. I had a copy of iMovie 2.1 for Mac OS X, which seemed to work fine. I went out and shot some random footage in our backyard using my old Sony V1P HDV camera. After shooting some video in HDV 1080i, I realised it wasn't going to be supported on this laptop. I then went and shot some standard definition DV footage, which transferred over fine. One of the main drawbacks to shooting on mini DV tapes back in the day was that you had to import the footage in real time. I put a little video together and exported it in the highest quality settings. This clip took well over 20 minutes to render. Let's take a look. Web browsing is definitely possible on this laptop, and a lot of people seem to recommend the Camino browser. However, sadly, it is no longer receiving updates. Both Safari and Camino can load YouTube, but the videos just won't play. I also noticed a lot of other websites just do not work at all. Typing up documents is actually great. The keyboard on this laptop feels very nice to type on. So this laptop could still be used for things like script writing. So there we have it. A $25 Apple PowerBook sold as not working and restored to its former glory. I hope you enjoyed this video being a little bit longer. It makes me very happy to see old computers and laptops get fixed up, and I'll be sure to do that in many videos to come. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you've liked what you've seen, definitely feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. The next video will be out in one to two weeks.